Welcome to episode five of Ed's Not Dead. I'm Robbie Dodd. I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. C.H. Siddons. Hey, Mr. Siddons. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. It's I'm good. so glad to be here with you. It's good to see you. Yeah. It's always, it's always nice in the show when you and I can get our fighting out of the way before the show begins. <laughs> Yes, isn't it? That was a lot the fighting and the losing. There's a lot of that. A lot of that. Do you get tired of it, Mr. Craves? Only when it protracts the <laughs> recording process. I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> we could have been done an hour ago. Yeah, that's true. Welcome to the show, everybody. Also, Mr. Peter Cravel. Hi, yeah. Peter. Hey, how's how's how are you? Great. Good. Good. Yeah. You can find me at R W Dodd and Mr. Sids at C H Siddons and at Peter Crable. and of course at Ed's Not Dead. And PC. <laughs> PC. I yeah. forgot that part. PC. Anywhere else? Facebook. Ed's Not Dead on Facebook and also our Ed's Not Dead website. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Where you guys have been blogging like crazy. What mm-hmm. what new blogs do we have up? Just the student engagement. One. Check for understanding is coming Ch- out yeah. soon. Oh, have we haven't done that one? No. Okay. Oh, I meant to tell you I edited it, so it should be good. Oh, nice. <laughs> I, I edited it. Yeah, it's very hard to say. Edited. You're doing checking for understanding? Yes. Is it going to be as watered down and non-research based as <laughs> engagement? <laughs> just, uh, well, we'll just compare it to the next blog that you do. Oh, 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 that was a good one. Remember last time we were like, "Hey cool. guys, just send it over my way. I can like find some research." I was like, "Oh really? Can you?" I was talking to can I was talking all? to Kaz. I took one little shot. I was talking and to Mr. Kaz earlier. Both barrels. Boom. I was talking to Mr. Kaz earlier in the week, and he made a little uh, a zing about uh, a about zing? the blog. What did he say? He's he's like, man, uh, some of those blog posts you got are really great. I don't think Robbie does a lot of those though. <laughs> Does he do a lot of them? I was like, no. Guys, we speak in one unified voice. Yes. Okay. Oh, by the way, I meant to ask that. <laughs> it's when I read that engagement blog, which Mr. Sins... You read it? It was very good, because I know you wrote it. But the thing I'm concerned about is at the end of it, it doesn't actually say who authored it. I, I don't want my... it's a collective agreement. I, I don't want my name associated with oh, that thing at all. Baby. <laughs> it's, it's not dead. Okay. All right. Anyway, folks. You are Ed's Not Dead. Welcome to the show. We have a great show today. Uh, we are going to do a news segment, right, Mr. Craves? A news roundup. Yeah, news roundup. Education in the news. So yeah. we're going to get into three different stories that are big right now that hopefully you all will enjoy. Um, but before we do that, as we always do, let's jump into some show feedback. That I have prepared again, second time in the row. It's, Just saying. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. Twice. Because I, I, when I start to do my turn towards you on show feedback, <laughs> I love it because your I get stomach sweaty drops. And usually not prepared. <laughs> all right, so what do you have? And you actually put it in the show notes. That's right. Uh, we have a friend, friend of the pod, Joanna Sabatino Hernandez. She's a follower and she, um, she caught me in a school one day and um, she she actually told me how much she loves the show. She said, just heard Joe Feldman Thank on the you, podcast Joanna. twice. She listened to it twice. Best one yet. I'm ordering the book and devoting the next department meeting. Um, she w- works with math teachers uh, on having the conversation. It just hit me. We don't teach teachers how to grade. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Wow. Good point. Thanks, Joanna. Yeah, that's very so she yeah. really, and, and that means we have to say thanks to Joe Feldman because we got a lot of positive feedback about uh, Joe's segment. Yes, we I have. I think it really resonated with, mm-hmm. with teachers. Yeah. Great- and and speaking of teachers, we had a comment from Mr. Kaz, who was also on the show. Yeah, he's a guest on the show. He quoted that standards-based grading is an equitable practice, and he said, averaging early attempts at mastery benefits the privileged students who come to class with more refined academic skills, while concomitantly, Whoa. big word, punishing less privileged students. Interesting. So is all you have to do, comment a lot, then we'll get you on the show? Yep. Is that is that the secret for us? That's, uh, that's the secret. Oh, it. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Man, Mr. Mr. Kaz is an all-out assault on, this, on, oh, the, on the traditional grading 100-point yeah. scale. But he's yeah, also right. not just a thought leader or an, someone who's you know, a blogger or a web blogger or whatever. He's actually doing it and, and doing the work every day. Yeah. Yes, he is. I mean, you know. he, he, if you follow him on Twitter, he's trying these things in his mm-hmm. classroom. Yep, he's, mm-hmm. a, he's an innovator. Yeah. How about Gary Chapin, CCE from New England? We got, a, we got some New England listeners. Yeah, ooh, yeah. Wow, look at that. He said, great podcast, and he said, um, grading works exactly as it was design, designed to work. Doing the job we don't need done anymore. Wow, that's a that's kind of a really interesting point. It is grading does it does what it's supposed yeah. to do. Yeah. It does what it was designed to mm-hmm. do. Yeah, I mean, and it does to people, rank and sort. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, we people, just might not need that. People anymore. extrapolate that to schools, right? Yeah, schools do what they were designed to do. Sure. Just yeah, you're right. Rank and sort. Mm-hmm. Right. 
Um, do you know? Do you have any connection to to Gary? No, don't know him. Gary, Gary. thanks for joining. Welcome, the, the, thank you. Not Dead Tribe. Yeah, yeah. We're excited about that because most of our feedback comes from people that like live next door to us. <laughs> so that's family great. members. Yeah, it's awesome. They're right. obligated. And we got uh, Francis Frost, show of the friend of the veteran show, friend of the pod, Francis Frost. She was mad about the format. She said, "There's less stuff for okay, me to fuss so about." She's definitely on my team now, but because <laughs> Francis, she, I don't understand the new format. But she said, "I have to spend all my time paying attention to the interview." But then she listened to the interview that we just had with Joe Feldman, and she said that was a good interview, good points on how teachers grade. What is is the point of grades? I definitely think I'd be a different teacher if I got back into the classroom considering some ideas you discussed. It is an interesting concept just because since we've done this and I've done a lot more reading and thinking and research and, you know, about teaching. Yeah. And I I just had never thought about when I was – teaching yeah and what it would be like how it would be different if i if i started all over again you know what i would do differently one of the things that um i always kind of to a certain degree dismiss the impact of grades and and then when you spend time in high schools and you have discussions with high school teachers and administrators and parents um you know we can we can discuss the evils of the kind of traditional way of grading and and cause talks about that a lot and and certainly advocates a move towards standards-based grading but whatever side of the fence you're on there's no doubt that grades have a huge impact on kids and and it's a high future it's a a high oh yeah man it's a high stakes kind of environment Mm -hmm. with with Mm -hmm. grades and i'm not sure i always understood that um but you know there's that's why there are phrases like grade grubbing and um, I mean, there's we we condition kids to get to that point. Yeah, though. we yeah. we do it to ourselves, and then we complain that all they care about is grades, and yeah. that's yeah. what we communicate in our oh, practices yeah. and our beliefs. Yeah. Hey, they're not born that way. No, I mean we've 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 raised them to right. be that way. Yeah. Right. All right. So good. All right. Well, we got some good feedback on episode four. Are you are you going to say something else? Why are you looking at me that way? Because I want it's it's a special day today. It's a special day today. <laughs> yeah, it's. That's not the song I was going to sing, but <laughs> it's it's one T's birthday. Oh. We haven't talked to him about him on the show in a while. No, and he's he we 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 lost interest in him. <laughs> and, I, and I thought we should give him a call. We had a good couple. You want to give him there. a call? Let's give him a call. Okay, all right. One T. I mean, the nice thing is that it might have been so long since we harassed him on air yeah. that he might actually pick up. He might. I mean, I seriously doubt it. Yeah, we haven't but. made fun of him. And he hasn't he hasn't had any zingers for us on Twitter. No, like, no, no, he's been low profile. He's been Mr. Uh, retweet guy. He's been yeah. super political favorite retweet and guy. And he's Mr. Big Time Writer. Jim Patterson. I can't get to this call oh, right Jim now. Patterson. But if you leave a message, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We will. Bye. We should give him a leave a message. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished Today recording, is 82nd you may hang birthday. Up or 80, press 83. One for more 83. Options. He's 83. Great. Yeah, he's great. Happy birthday, Jim. Happy birthday, Happy birthday, Jim. Jim. Happy we miss birthday. you. Happy birthday. We're not going to put right. this on the air. Don't worry. Make sure, <laughs> make sure you drink your insure <laughs> and you get a good night's sleep. <laughs> Anyway, all right, one T, we miss you. Yeah. We do. Bring yeah. joy to the world. Yeah. He is. Yeah. One he, blog at a time for Edutopia. One, yeah, and Edutopia. And, he's, <laughs> and, he, and he interviews some heavy Ed hitters, right? Mm-hmm. Some thought yep. leaders. Yep. And he, he has not written one thing about us. <laughs> no, he has not. Yeah. What's hey, up with that? Uh, hey, Jim. Has, has, anybody, hint, hint. has anybody of any consequence written anything about us, about Ed's Not Dead? They're missing out. They are. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've got there could be reams out there. Total reams. But there's not. All right, yeah. so let's jump into our first Ed story in our uh, compendium. Education in the news today. Here we go. Finland's digital based curriculum impedes learning. Researcher finds. Uh, this is about a Helsinki's university researcher says Finland's current digital and phenomenon based learning methods used in schools may not be suitable for all students. First of all, um, you know we wanted to choose an article about Finland because it's about the first article we've ever seen where there's actually criticism of Finnish schools. Right? Uh-huh. They are not as good as they, as they seem. And that was the other reason why is we wanted you to do your Finnish accent. Because okay. we bury the fish before we eat it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there's this thing in Finland called phenomenon-based learning, which is a departure from traditional Finnish curriculum which um, anybody that's followed education at all in the last two decades understands has produced excellent outcomes along with their just uh, system in general. But phenomena-based learning, Mr. Krabs, would you say is just kind of a 
PBL approach, yeah, similar or, or somewhat inquiry based. It's um, thematic based instead of subject based. So looking at big ideas and questions and kind of approaching it from many different angles. What's the role of technology in this? There's a role. There's a big role in technology, right? Yeah, I mean, is utilize it, technology. I think is a tool to kind of answer questions and okay, yeah, okay. Um, so the more the digital tools were used in lessons, the worst learning outcomes were. That's one of the findings. It's a pretty definitive statement. In the research. Right. Uh, this was found in all areas of the well-known PISA measurement, um, which Finland always um, does very well in. And what I was most surprised about, uh, very surprised about, is that students can be easily distracted by the devices themselves. <laughs> Really? Yeah, yeah, like laptops so, or tablets. Yeah, yeah. And they and and get this, they often start using them for something else yeah. besides schoolwork. Yeah. So what was you know, you know my line about that. What do I say about technology in the classroom? High engagement, low learning. Yeah. So I guess mm-hmm. that's what they're getting at. Yeah. Um, but proponents of phenomena-based learning have claimed it would even out differences between students with various academic backgrounds. Oh, so it's it, but, it's it did, to right? be an equalizer. Is yeah, it creating lowered a gap? the bar for everybody. Everybody did worse, right? Uh, is, is that well, was, is no? That was, some groups did worse than others. Uh, they did? Okay, I didn't see that yeah. part. Ah. Like which groups did which groups did worse than others? Um, at risk, and then I think they qualified at risk as coming from single family homes, being male, being, being male, and coming from immigrant. That is definitely families. a risk. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. So all of those groups um, did worse as a result of the technology, right? So the study, fifteen um, year olds take the PISA in 72 different countries and regions, right? So just a little refresher about the PISA. This study from tw- uh, 2012 to 2015 used 5,000 pupils' test scores. And um, basically, phenomena-based teaching, they found, had a particularly negative effect on the results in subjects of math and science. Mm-hmm. Um, the researcher is critical about the method of giving students more responsibility for their own education, saying phenomena-based learning requires students to have strong self-discipline and initiative. So sounds like academic choice initiative was a, was a part of phenomena-based learning and didn't necessarily translate into improved outcomes. Yeah. It almost sounds like, though, the, the first thing I think of is well, let's put some computers in front of kids and it'll all work itself out. Yeah, and I, when it says and they also po- that, oh, real quick, they also point out that one of the maybe one of the criticisms of phenomena based learning was that using tech was an outcome versus a tool. Yeah, in other words, it shouldn't be an outcome. Right. And you know, one of the points you brought up earlier was having to do with um, what did you say? <laughs> ah, I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> As I look at my phone, I'm <laughs> I know. paying attention. Totally well. distracted me. <laughs> oh, no. no, no, it was totally my okay, fault. Okay, what do you got? I don't remember. What did I say? What? What? what Using uh, it as a tool, not, not using not, it as a tool, not right. as an outcome, not as an outcome. And so it's that, just another thing that is important in a classroom environment. It's another tool in the toolbox. But I would say that in general, we we can't rely on on technology to do, to do the work of learning for us as a community. And I, and I, I would also like to say that um, at the end of the day, the mo- it really comes down to what's most important in the classroom. And that's the, the teacher. Yeah. The and quality I remember, of the teacher. And I remember I was going to say, sorry about that was the students that do the, yeah, that was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Yeah, that was great. The students that do the best are um, those that are self-directed. And it's like, well, yes, every, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 year old is not going to be super self directed in their learning. So, just in kind of its mere conception, like, is the concept behind it even that sound where, oh, now that we know the kids are the best, self starters are going to do the best in it, you know, is it really appropriate to use for everyone? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I always think about what someone said to me, our friend, um, the IB specialist Margie Lope, mm-hmm. old friend. I don't think a friend of the show. I don't know even Margie. Oh, yeah. Did, she, did yeah. Margie listen? I yeah, she listened. Maybe we read some feedback. No, I don't know. I can't. Yeah, remember. tweet at her. Anyway, she always used to talk to me about when I would when I would opine about needing more technology <laughs> in classrooms. She would always say, "Remember, the software is between their ears. Um, that that the you've got the best software in the world right there in the classroom in yeah. the kids right you yeah. don't you don't you don't necessarily mm-hmm. need it in computers right um, yeah and, and I so it's all about how we engage their thinking 
Yeah, or, and I and I don't. Recently, I've kind of gone a little more of the 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 luddite route. Are you going traditional, dude? A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm just you're like gonna put them in rows. Get all no, just like get rid of all the computers. Yeah, no, I'm you with know, you. a little yeah. like make them cr- think. Cr- not, yeah, it's just I don't know. You know, I'm just and I think it to me honestly for me it stems more from um, the prevalence of cell phones and even my own use of cell phones and knowing how like distracted I am and how disengaged that can make you with your surroundings. So I think a little bit of it is, is a, you know, projection as a result of self-reflection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it certainly has extended that, that sort of train of thought for me, at least is extended into technology and or computers and the use of them in the classroom uh, somewhat. Mr. Siddons, have you seen any teachers pass around the hat and collect phones and, and have them there so kids can actually see them and feel safe that their phone is not gone, but they're, it's also away from mm-hmm. them? Yep. You've seen people do that? Mm-hmm. Does it work? Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, to, for the most part, but if you don't pay attention to the kids that don't follow that expectation or have two phones, for example, I will say... Two uh, phones. Dear, dear. Yeah, some of them have two. I can't dear even handle God, one man. phone. Uh, but the, what I do find interesting in, Finland, in, in new you. teacher with new teachers, they a lot of them have no only experience teaching with Chromebooks and, tech, and, mm. and a whole oh, abundance of technology. And when the Wi-Fi goes out or the power goes out or whatever, when things don't go right with technology which happens some are not able to uh uh come back from that oh absolutely there's not a backup plan well i mean in a way let's be honest if if you've gone away from going to the copy machine to print out to copy packets (laughs) you've come in in the morning and you're thinking that your your laptops or your chromebooks or whatever you use have the that, content that's it's there and yeah. if they're not working then you don't have anything to do <laughs> no i understand Correct. that but i'm i i think the i think the hallmark of effective teaching uh, is is being able to think and change pull the rabbit fly. out of a hat you got it you got to work with it because if the lesson doesn't work even if it's on chromebooks what are you going to do yeah if yeah. kids aren't learning or they're not engaged or they're not or they're not being i don't know in the moment because of a lesson or lack thereof of an effective lesson, then what are you going to do? All right, get us out with a Finnish accent. Let me, well, let me just say before you do, do it, yeah, think of a good one because we are our interview is going to be with Andrew Marcinic uh, next week, uh, and he's going to talk to us a little about the use of technology. Isn't that this week? <laughs> isn't that on? Sorry, Francis. Isn't that on this episode? No, uh, is it a different episode? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. It'll be released on it's a different so Monday. It's so confusing. Yeah, I know it is. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Andrew Marcinic, and he's yes. going to talk about compare. He's going to compare uh, the use of computers to pencils. Yes, it's going to be the, awesome. The lead revolution. Yes. The anti letters. Yeah, the anti pencil. The, the anti letter. Pe- <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> That's more like the German accent. <laughs> All right. Let's come back to the U.S. and let's go to Rhode Island. You Which ready? Is neither a road. Nor an island. <laughs> okay. That was a bad old man joke. Uh, well, there's an article. It's from Coffee Talk. There's an article by Aaliyah Wong in The Atlantic, which is a very extensive, well written piece, I thought. Yeah. Um, I.e., well, very long. <laughs> I read it. I don't know why you're laughing. Uh, the, students, the students suing for a constitutional right uh, for education. Um, so she starts out with a heavy hitting line by saying nearly all the world's 180 plus countries include the term education in their constitution. There Surely is, United States is part of that. There is group. one, there is one exception Oh, and that would be the U S Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, so which we know, talked about in episode one, by the way, yeah, we did. She really, mm-hmm. okay. Way, way back. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she talks extensively about how our decentralized system of education really puts, um, the the education as a right or at least as um a law and at the feet of the states and Mm -hmm. and then therefore really funded by states uh and uh, most of our structures our governance structures are state and local and that um there have been suits over the years that have tried to address this uh, because students Many places in the United States don't have access to 
adequate education. Mm-hmm. Um, so there have been various suits over the years that have tried to use different legal wrangling, right, to, to get at this idea of education as a right. Um, the Equal Protection Clause, she uses that as an example that, mm-hmm. that didn't work. Right. And then as a result, over the last 40 years, um, the, the courts and especially the Supreme Court have, have stayed away from this issue of, of actually considering education as a constitutional right. So this current suit is what, Mr. Krabs? What's it called? Ramando? Cook versus Ramando. Um, all public school students or parents on behalf of their children accuse the state of Rhode Island of providing an education so inferior that the state has failed to fulfill its duties under the U.S. Constitution. But given that there is no explicit guarantee of education in the Constitution, the lawyers are making a sort of blank shot argument that in denying citizens of Rhode Island a quality education, the state is, in essence, preventing people from exercising their constitutional rights. Mm -hmm. Such as voting. And then because it falls disproportionately across the population, equal protection under the law, the 14th Amendment. I think it's a really interesting uh, take. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. But I I do think there's something to it. I mean, I can certainly follow the logic that says that that kind of says if you're providing um an unequal or unequal education that you are hindering certain people to be full and participating members of society and we kind of talked about this before we did the article but when we had um the historian johan neem on and he talked about the purpose of public education in public schools it was to to create essentially educated um, individuals who right. could participate in their civic duty, yep. one of which was voting and or kind of being literate, contributing members of society. And um, on that point, they couch, they're going to couch the argument um, in the fact that Rhode Island does not have a required civics course. <laughs> <laughs> nor a required American history curriculum, which I both I think are interesting. Yeah, that's a side note. But yeah, it, I don't yeah, think it's I don't I, think I, it's I, a side she, note. I think it's she. Think it's she central. She, she I think it's central. A, uh, she, she, uh, the reason why I think it's central is because um, the fact that they're using it as a as a as a way to bring in liberals and and conservatives into the who would want a civics type of course required for students. Absolutely, because um, she points out that there are several. I don't know if I'd go as far as say conservative, but there are several traditionalists that are involved in this suit that that's really that, – um, that's that's the impetus for it. For example, she says – A coalition he, of, of both, correct. which would, would hopefully provide a bigger or more strong right. argument. Right, which was the – you know that was the same kind of that was the same kind of push in No Child Left Behind. I mean that was a very bi- bipartisan group too. Um, she said, uh, Miss Wong says the position of social studies specialist in the state's education department has remained vacant for the past six years. <laughs> right. So that was thinking I could maybe apply you could for do that. that. Yeah. Absolutely. Are Summers were, are great in Rhode Island. Yeah, are, I know. You could go to the shore. The shah. Shah. I don't know how. Eat uh, some grinders. Some sh- some okay, grinders and oysters. You guys have no idea. You don't know anything about Rhode Island. Yeah. Gri- uh, excuse <laughs> okay, me. Okay, oh, all right, grinders. All right. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Okay, There's also okay. some hot dogs they have. Okay, or something. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> and as is the case in many states of Rhode Island, access to civic skills and knowledge tends to correlate with income. Take, for example, the fact that the plaintiffs attend schools that have only a small supply of antiquated computers, a dearth that deprives students of the critical educational opportunities necessary to develop the skills for Internet and media literacy. So I, I it, a little bit of this is a reach, and, yeah. and it's interesting that they've they've staked out social studies, which has long been um, been kind of fodder for the the far the the political right in public in progress against progressivism. Um, social studies has never been their favorite. History is what we should be teaching, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Dates and facts, correct? And events, mm-hmm. yep. Um, as opposed to social studies, which is a way of thinking. Right. So um, I'm, I'm not I'm not totally sold on that approach. That part of it, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I'm curious to see where it goes. Again, I, I don't foresee it going very far, going to the Supreme Court, but I do think it's an interesting tact uh, to kind of address inequalities across different either schools or school systems um, instead of just saying, well, yeah, just deal to school systems individually. We'll deal with it and deal with their problem. It's a little bit of a... Of a um, you know ten thousand foot view of saying, well, let's look at this from a statewide level 
and how is what we're doing affecting kids long term and preventing them potentially from being full and or contributing members of society? It's interesting. Where would this fall in relation to IDEA, Public Law ninety four one forty two? I mean, in a in a way, some of the some of the legislation. I mean, there there's the the federal government has passed really important pieces of legislation over the last, um, uh, you know, century. Yeah. Um, and the Supreme Court has made big time decisions related to education, but uh, IDA uh, is has strong wording about. Um, about the rights of kids and parents as educationally. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just thinking what, it, what, what does having education in our constitution, what does it get us? Well, I mean, again, it, go thinking about the system working as it's supposed to, you know, I mean, it was designed as a state system and education was meant to be taken up by the state. So one thing you didn't mention is although our federal constitution does not mention education, I think every state mentions education right. into our right to an education. And, and there have been plenty of laws passed by Congress that mandate many things that the states have to do. Yes. Uh, IDEA, the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. I mean, there's... there's, there's You know, and interestingly, what our, our, our friend old dear Betsy would say is that in order for students that are not getting an adequate education, their right to an education, that the solution is to allow them to pick the school that they want to go to to get them what they perceive to be their right oh, that is an interesting take oh it's kind of dirty it is yeah. a little bit <laughs> yeah but it's it's an interesting yeah, take their right is the, the 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 choice piece which they don't have correct right these kids they're, don't have that choice they're they're, they're lo- locked in they're locked in so they don't have a so choice between them so they're it's, that would be betsy's approach correct that would be right. her solution right. is to just right. get them out right right it doesn't work right. just get them don't, out don't put it in the constitution give them choice to go somewhere else right yeah right. all right so we will follow Cook versus Raimondo in uh, Rhode Island, and we'll see what happens with yes. education as a constitutional right. All right, moving on. Um, a very depressing story. <laughs> yeah. In, in the, we're, we're going down to the Deep South. We're uh, leaving New England. We're going to the Deep South. What state are we going to? Louisiana. In, in episode, uh, season one, didn't I make a bad Louisiana joke? Most likely. I didn't mean to. Yeah, we I went to college in Louisiana, our- so... They're, That's they, right, you yeah, did. So they're all back. All right, so get us up to speed on what happened in a charter that um, was apparently doing some really great work on behalf of kids. Um, Ostensibly. Having kids achieve at high levels and uh, gain entry into some of the most prestigious colleges across the country, yes. and then the bottom fell out. Yeah, so this school, uh, T.M. Landry, um, small town Louisiana, Bow Bridge, Louisiana, I believe. It's actually not a charter. So it's Ooh, an, it's sorry. A, yep, it's a non-accredited school. Uh, yes. What does that mean? It does not fall under any jurisdiction whatsoever. It's a private school. No. Well, I, I don't know what it is. <laughs> they, well, it's they, a non-accredited they, school, they describe, a private school? They describe it in here as a private school. Okay, yeah, then I guess I it is. But, but, but it non-accredited is... It's not a, it, a private school, I don't... I don't you think, can get accreditation, probably, right? Yeah, private yeah. School? from the state, you can. It's a right. non-state accredited okay. wow. learning institution. Oh, Anyhow, so I wonder, T- I wonder how many private schools are non-accredited. That would be an excellent question. I don't know. Uh, so T M Landry, um, Google it. This Google school it. started by a guy, Michael Landry, and his um, wife, College Preparatory School. Um, they kind of started it as a way to homeschool their kids, and they drew some other kids in, and just kind of grew and grew and grew. Anyway, they gained notoriety uh, about a year ago, really, when um, they posted a, a YouTube video of a student opening a college acceptance letter with surrounded by her peers. Uh, and I don't remember the specific school. I'm pretty sure it was an Ivy League school. Yeah. And they're all wearing um, Ivy League and very prestigious um, sweatshirts, gear, stuff like that. She gets into whatever. Everybody's super excited. Mm-hmm. Um I'm pretty sure everybody uh, that that was there at that time was black as well. And so the story was underprivileged black kids coming from a rough area in the deep South, traditional education system, um, fails them. They go to the school, high expectations, um, learn year round, really long days, and they get into these really prestigious schools. Yeah. 
And um, in some sense, that's true. I mean, where these kids have gotten in, it's factually correct. Yeah. What these kids have done is more or less factually correct. So there certainly is some things to celebrate there. But how it was done. However. <laughs> well, there's a big there's, there's a, a big, big however. I don't, I don't like there's that some, word. It, we're, like we're going into the yeah. dark okay. zone here. So, um, I try not to use it in writing, however. So some, to be honest, some disgruntled former students yep. who have gone off to college and felt that the school didn't prepare them adequately. Some current students and or recently departed students who felt that the school was um, not meeting their needs and or inappropriate in terms of a learning institution have come out um, to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. I believe the term is this is a house built on water. Um, and this is, school is not actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. So amongst the things that came out as a result by, of the, by the way, what's the study. Na- what's the name of the, of the charismatic educational leader? Michael Landry. Michael Landry. Yes. Okay. And yes. his wife. Yes. Yes. So this is a truly a mom and pop truly, school. Truly, truly, yes. Okay. All right. So uh, amongst other things, so their model um, attendance in class is optional for students um, so that you have sporadic attendance in different classes. Students felt like that didn't necessarily lead to the best learning outcomes as it related to um, learning content. Right. What they did was they focused almost exclusively on the ACTs to the exclusion of everything else. Wow. Right. Some kids came out and said if it wasn't on the ACTs, they didn't know it. But that's how they were able to gain entry into these schools. By the way, that's not unlike what a lot of other kids across the country do. Yep, it's a they they pay thousands of dollars to prepare for the ACT. Correct. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yep. The falsification of transcripts and or records for classes that students did never actually took um, showed up on their transcripts as classes that they had taken. Okay, that that transcript falsification is a major problem. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, some kids who left the school, they withheld their transcripts until tuition was paid. And so kids would try, they would go to the school, let's say they fell behind and were delinquent in their payments, and they would try and leave and go to a different school, um, and they would not have their transcripts sent. And so sometimes had to repeat entire grades or entire multiple grades because they didn't receive any credit. It, it was essentially like they weren't in school mm-hmm. for the year or years that they were there. Um Big one is an accusation that they falsified college applications, so just made up stuff, not only in terms of classes, but in terms of personal narratives and or essays. Yeah, there were some damaging personal narratives. I heard one one youngster, one young person um, had their basically the story of their lives made to sound like their family was in terrible shape when that alcoholic was, father yeah, yeah, yeah. abusive no child in and support. out of the life yeah, yeah, and, and, yeah. and none of that was true at all yeah he said no my, my dad's in my life right. this is totally untrue yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's that, unfortunate yeah michael landry said he encouraged students to rewrite and work with them to include or omit details to create the most powerful essays possible okay so that was kind of his comeback okay um Let's see. What so else? are they still operating? What's they are the, still what's, operating. What's the current state? They're still operating. In fact, they're thriving. They're going to be opening, uh, I believe, a second campus um, in okay. the near future. All right. And um, Michael Landry is defiant. He's not backing down. He is not backing down. I mean, there's some there's some inflammatory accusations about what he apparently forced students to uh, do. Yeah, sorry. And I skipped that one in the list here, but abuse, essentially. Right. So beating kids. Making um, them kneel on rice. For hours on end, um, kids with special needs uh, who were abused, abused by him. Yes, ab- yeah, by him. Yeah, um, physically and or kind of verbally. So it's it's interesting the questions this raises from, um, kind of a a school govern governance structure as we just we, talked about last time. Yeah, and then we started out the you started out this 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 report by talking about it being an, uh, being an unaccredited school correct um that's basically operating kind of beyond the bounds of a of a system um or a structure and um and based on that there were some compelling stories about what they could do to get better outcomes for kids yeah but then the slippery slope there is is that when you're not in that structure and you're and you're you're not in a in a in kind of tightly coupled to accountability that then it seems that sometimes these things start to happen or the appearance of these things. But I mean, and and my first inclination, my first thought is, well, this is what happens when you have 
free reign to make any school you want and have right. anybody right. run it, right? Right. right. But then the, the for profit charters. But any you know any school where the, anybody like some business person comes in and thinks they can run a school, whatever. But the the thing that sticks out to me then is well, this hap- sometimes this stuff happens in public schools. Yes, it does. Um, to a point where people are arrested and they're tried and they're put in jail right. for fraud. Right. So I don't know what I certainly don't know what the answer is, but. I, it does go back to your original point that governance certainly matters. Where, where's the accountability right. to the, the families? Where's the accountability to the children? And, and it doesn't seem that that mechanism is in this well, particular and, and look, I don't, I don't community. condone, you know, ab- abusing children clearly or anything like that. But, you know, it does say, okay, well, what, what ends justify what means? Right. And I, I don't know, and there's no easy answer for it. Um, and I think for every family, they have to make that decision for themselves. You know, and it's 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 hard to argue. And his point at the end, in, in its kind of defiance, is like, who else is doing this for kids? Who else is going to do that for these kids? And let's say the alternative is there's a 90-plus percent chance that they go to a school and never end up in college. Right. Was that a better alternative? Hmm. You know, maybe not. All right. Well... It's another story that we're going to have to continue to follow. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah, this is this is not the end of this story, no. for sure. There's going to be... This is only... The, the, there's only a small microcosm yeah, of what there's, there's gonna be, is going to go yeah. Did you find know, any... Did you get any info from us, Mr. Fast Googler over there mm-hmm. on, on accreditation? No. Okay. Not in anything we, I could we, share we, in we, a small amount of time. We, we need to... I thought you were going to be more effective than I that. I was, but I wanted to be in the moment. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right uh, folks, don't go away. When we come back... Uh, he's excited. Look how excited I got he is. some got Finnish good, meatballs for you. <laughs> he's got, he's got some, a good quiz for us. Awesome Finnish good, meatballs. No, no, dear Betsy, this this episode. Uh, well, I'll just say that she's making a lot more money this past year. Okay. So that's that's as far as we'll go. Just look it up. She made a lot of money last year. All right. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Welcome back to episode five of Ed's Not Dead. We've had a great show, folks. What's up, boys? I hello. How was the musical interlude? I see it on the show notes. It was, was really it, good. Was it good? Did you like it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was good. Sometimes I like to be like on a on a real radio show where I could come back to like Sympathy for the Devil Ooh, yes. from Rolling Stones, yeah. and I could hear the music. I, I feel like it would fire me up as a podcast host. Yeah, if we had a little bit, you know, we could we do had, that. Actually, it would we, be, it'd be we had easy money. To do. No, we we could just do it. Just like play it as we're talking? Yeah. Okay. In case he just played it, and then it would happen. Maybe we should try that. Soul yeah. Witness. Soul yeah, so we can play some Soul Witness. We sure can. Soul Witness has been good for us. Yes, they have. Mr. Crable's band. Hello. All right. This is the point of the show where we either do Dear Betsy or a quiz show. Quiz show. Mr. Sids. What do you got? <laughs> so uh, I'm doing something a little different. Is it going to be hard? Yeah. Because I... That's good. I was... Barely able to come back from that break. <laughs> Sorry. So in, on 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 uh, wait wait don't tell me on NPR the, the the NPR news show they do something called not my job. We're gonna do a little play off of that so we don't get copyright infringement. Uh, okay. So how's this go? We all know about Finland's education system. So I love it. So what I want to ask you all about you, you is can't... what do you know about Finland itself? Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If you're looking for weird events. You go to Finland. You have to. <laughs> okay. You have to ask. Like, are you going to do a Finnish accent for us, please? We. Love I, it. I think I'm doing a German accent. I, I'm, <laughs> I don't want to completely okay. alienate our Finnish audience. Are the Finns? So you won't believe what the Finns are up to when it comes to weird annual events, contests, and similar activities. So you're going to have to figure it out. And there's multiple choices on this. Nokia. Okay. Ready? <laughs> that was actually one of my choices, but I wasn't going to. What I Nokia? Didn't go See, well, I one knew of the it questions. Was. Ready? Yeah. Each summer, first one. This weird event in Sankarjarvai, Finland, <laughs> becomes more and more popular. What is the contest that occurs at the world championship level for over 13 years now? A, a herring catch and release contest. B, a wife carrying contest. Or C, a lumber rolling contest. Mm, definitely C. Yeah, I think... Um... Uh, I guess I should get Crable Crable went first. So you gotta I be guess, quicker. 
Yeah, I don't think there's catch and release of herring. Yeah, go to the. I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna go to wife carrying. Yeah, you can't go wrong with wife carrying. Ding, wife carrying. Oh. B is correct. Yeah, 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 the so wife carrying lucky. contest has been at, at at the world championship level for over 13 years now. Got to really train for and, those. And, uh-huh. and that is a that's a that's a that's a go to for the Finns. It sure is. Okay, number right. two, a weird event for music lovers. Mm-hmm. This rockin' but probably silent world championship occurs every summer. There was also a 2006 documentary about this. Air guitar. Is it A, the Air Rifle Championship, B, the Air Guitar World Championship, or C, the Cross Country Skiing World Championship? I already said Air Guitar. So I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Air Rifle. It is actually B, the Air Guitar <laughs> World Championship in Ulu, Finland. Ever played the air guitar? It's not as easy to get in as a contestant, but it's a lot of fun to watch. It's part of the Ulu Music Video Festival in late summer, mm, and the documentary is called f- Air Guitar Nation. The Finns do a lot of fun stuff in the summer. They do. Yeah. Speaking of fun things, number three, this contest is all about swatting. See how much you can swat in five minutes. Learn from the pros at this annual championship in Finland. Is it A, swatting chewing gum onto the wall? B swatting I mosquitoes <laughs> or C swatting horse flies. Mosquitoes. B uh horse flies. It is B. Ah. Mosquitoes. Oh, 2 to 1. All right. Is this is this it? Number 4, last one. For the next Graves, question. You can tie. I got it. Okay. <laughs> For it. the next question. Do you have a do you have a tiebreaker question? I do. Okay. All right. Uh it's not uh, yeah, I do. Uh, for the next question, just watch and enjoy the contestants suffer while they place their buttocks on okay. what? A, an anthill for as long as possible. <laughs> B, a hot spring for as long as possible. Or C, smoked fish smoked for fish. as long as possible. C, smoked fish. Uh, that's, a, that's a killer smoked fish. I'll go with uh, an anthill. A, an anthill ah! for as long as possible. <laughs> He's going to go to the weirdest one. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> All right. So, there you so go. two, two. We're going to do a. We're gonna, oh, we have a tiebreaker. All right. For the tiebreaker. So, um, Finland takes Albert Einstein's wise words quote, a person who never made a mistake never tried anything new seriously. And the country has declared October 13 the national day of what? To celebrate life setbacks as a natural path towards success. No, mu- no multiple choice. Nope. No. The, um, it's what's the? It's the day of something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the day of failure. Okay. Uh, the hmm. day of learning. What's your answer? <laughs> the uh, the day of failure. Okay. Uh, it sounds s- so terrible. You can't have a day named the day of uh, failure. I'll say the day of divorce. Oh wow! <laughs> it is the day of failure. Oh, <laughs> oh what? look at that! <laughs> October thirteenth to celebrate life setbacks as a natural path. Wow, towards success. And w- interestingly enough, it's a growth one of our mindset. F- one although of our few- the, na- the name of the day is very depressing. <laughs> <laughs> the day of failure. The day of failure. We're going to get a guest on the show. She wrote a book about um, using failure as, as a way to build student capacity. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's, in, it's in the pipeline. On a okay. side note, um, so a buddy of mine... Good his, game, Mr. He, Krabs. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, it was good. His mom is uh, Finnish. They went back to Finland, like way the hell north in Finland for a family reunion. And the two biggest takeaways that I got from his whole like 10-day trip was they drink an insane amount of coffee. Mm. Right. Really? Yes. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Well, and I know I know they do it in Sweden because I remember in uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, all they do is drink coffee yeah. in those books. Yes. Yep. And he came back with this enormous bag full of hand knitted infant, baby, and children socks. Ooh. This is added made. <laughs> we're like, wait, wait, what do you what do you mean? She's like, she just made them and told us to bring them back and give them away to everyone. <laughs> I bet they're money. Oh, they're in, they're beautiful yes. and yeah. amazing. You and can take your child and stick them outside. There's and, yeah, sub zero temperature. But there's like seventy pairs of them. And that's Jeez. maybe excessive. Yeah, it was like oh my god, there's so many. That's so, cool. That's awesome. That's my connection. I would like Finland. to go to Finland. Yeah, of course. Me yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, and I would really like to go and visit some schools there. We should ask them to go. Passi Salberg. Yeah. Yeah. We'll when, are you go, when are you going to get us on NPR? When are we going to get on the Big Listen, Mr. Sims? When are they going to fly uh, I us? I think Big Listen is not a show anymore, apparently. Yeah. What? Yeah. Is it toast? I think so. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, I, secondary goal. 
Getting flown to pin- Finland. Ooh, yeah. yeah. That would be cool. Yeah, let's American work on that. American education podcasters in- uh, interview uh, f- the Finns. Dude, that'd be so cool. We yeah, could would go around to... Yeah, we could, we, we could, we we could tell them how big that. we are we in, need to, in America. We need to do that. <laughs> Somebody asked me the other day about Ed's Not Dead, um, and I thought of you, Mr. Krabs. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who is... Who's the drummer? And Ed's not dead. Who's the drummer? Yeah, you gotta mm. know that. You gotta know the drummer, right? Who's the drummer? Eh, probably me. I. That's what I thought too. Yeah, I thought you were the drummer also. Yeah. Yep. Like I don't understand the analogy. So like the role See, of the the drummer the in the band. The role of the drummer in the band keeps the beat going. Keeps the beat going. It's a little bit different. People don't really know but that you like you were just on stage and like just uh, played a show. It's, but <laughs> you're into your own thing. Yeah, but it wouldn't happen without you. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> he's the. Is he but you have both arms. I do. You're the. And I wonder what Robbie would be. What do you think? <laughs> That's, okay, we didn't. <laughs> I know you're gonna say like the diva lead singer or something. I didn't know I was gonna okay, say that. Good. Just right. kidding. Yeah, so, <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So what do we have coming up on? Ed's well, we have a, not dead. We got a break. So we're going to have a, a little bit of a break. So and that, I've been pretty insistent about the break. Breaks are, breaks are important. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. this is going to be the kind of... We'll do a couple this episode, a couple episodes, interview, and then a, a holiday break and come back sometime... I don't know when we're recording. Sometime around the new year. Okay. January 10th is when we're recording again. I can't believe it's that that's far it's pretty wild school year. Yeah. Pretty yeah. wild. It's insane. We got some people coming up. Um, what do we got for guests? We got some guests that are going to talk about how iPhones changed... Uh, America, hopefully, he's a professor, talked about it 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, we have someone from the Carlisle Academy that's uh, the, the, was in charge, in charge of the <laughs> Museum for Carbon County, somewhere in Pennsylvania. But they, uh, Car- Carlisle Academy was founded 100 years ago this year, and I want to bring someone in to talk about um, Is how it that the ch- Carlisle I- Indian School? Yes. Okay. That's yep. what I thought. Okay. I, so, I know nothing about that, so you're gonna have to, we're going to have to find out about Jim that. Jim Thorpe. Uh, was really? was enrolled there, and the what Thorpe. they tried to do is to assimilate uh, Indians at the time. They mm-hmm. forced them to go there mm-hmm. and tried to make them uh, assimilate to white culture and talk about the uh, what we've learned from then from it's, that point. It's funny. My dad is ninety, and um, because he's so old, um, I grew up with hearing a lot about Jim Thorpe. Because if you were of his generation, he's he was, ninety. He was the man. And yeah, the Jim Thorpe story was a really compelling mm-hmm. story to people his age as a kid in the thirties. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and the and the, the 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 betrayal and the sadness of what happened to to Jim Thorpe and mm-hmm. the loss of his his medals and he was such an amazing athlete and and individual and it, and there's a town named after him in Pennsylvania. I One of my that. favorite concert venues ever to go to is in Jim Thorpe. His remains are there. Really, it used to be called Mach Chunk was this was the city name, and they changed it to Jim Thorpe to attract tourists in the fifties. And his remains are there. Interesting. His ancestors want to bring it back to Oklahoma. Very big court case that's been going on for many years. What hmm. what tribe was Thorpe from? I don't remember, and I, I should, certainly wouldn't be able to I, guess. I should so I should know that. Well, we'll find out because we're yeah. gonna have someone on from the from the museum. I'll give us some background. Okay, yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Uh, we got uh, we have a, a guy by the name of Mitchell Robinson who might come on the show. Okay, and uh, around the anniversary of the DeVos appointment. Okay, mm-hmm. and he's written extensively about the education system in Michigan, and cool. we're gonna try to get him in uh, to talk about. Oh, that'd um, be nice. That, Just hear that perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, talk about unregulated charters in Michigan. Uh, I know we can talk to him about a lot of stuff. He has a blog. It's got a lot of good stuff on him. He's a professor of music education, I think, in Michigan. Okay. Huh. Really cool guy. Right. Cool. Yeah. All right. Um, and coming out on the website is uh, a blog on checking for understanding, right? Yes. It's going to be a big one. Yeah. And what's coming out on teacher tips? Uh, it's going to be a good one on... I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. Uh, the, I don't teacher have tips, the teacher <laughs> tips is going to be how to make learning personalized. There you go. I'm how sorry. do we make teacher learning personalized? <laughs> teacher how, learning? Yes. Okay. Teacher learning. How do we put learning in the hands of teachers to make it more meaningful for them and ultimately to uh, impact change in a, in a more in, effective way for right. professional development? All right. Well, folks, thanks for joining us. It's been a great show, right, boys? Yes. We appreciate all your support and keep the feedback coming about Ed's Not Dead. Tweet us. 
send us uh, messages on Facebook or email us at Ed's Not Dead, um, and we'll we'll read your reviews online. We want to hear from you. Spread the word about the show and um, make sure that you have a wonderful holiday season, right, guys? Mm-hmm. Yes, please do. And in, this, do. in the spirit of giving, um, we hope you like what we give on the show, and we certainly appreciate what you give us by listening. Uh, Thank you. Follow me at RW Dodd, at CH Siddons, and at Peter Crable, and we will catch you next time.